hi students so for today we going to continue on another element of contracts which is free consent what is free consent and why free consent is necessary so free consents on general definitions as uh, as per my understanding is that your willingness or your you are agreeing to do something that is called free consent kerelaan hati untuk melakukan sesuatu perkara okay so uh, free consent is one of the essential elements in the formations of a valid contract so if uh, these elements doesn't exist then the contract can become invalid without free consent of the parties to the contract so the agreements between them is not binding we can see in section 10 subsection 1 of contract x provides that all agreements are contract if they are made by free consent of parties what is consent section 13 defines that two or more persons are said to consent when they agree upon the same thing in the same sense they agree the same thing in the same sense meaning to say that they are actually um, agreeing on the same matter the same contract so meanwhile section 14 also provides the definitions of free consent is actually an extension of definition okay consent is said to be free when it is not caused by coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation and mistakes okay there are five of them and we're going to learn afterwards so brace yourself it's going to be a quite long topic before that what's the effect if agreement made without free consent the agreement may become void or voidable so what is the difference like through our learning i keep saying like the agreement is void the agreement is void the agreement is voidable so what actually is it means right you have to be very very clear and don't confuse okay on these uh, two terms so according to section 2 subsection g of contracts act Okay, void contracts is an agreement which is not enforceable by law. Enforceable by law means it is an invalid contract. Why an invalid contract is unenforceable? Because it's void. <laughs> it's just the same terms that like being used interchangeably. Okay, so if let's say you want to continue doing the invalid contract, then if whatever happens in the future like if uh, you suffer loss in the contract or what, whatever you cannot bring the case uh, before the court to claim for remedies or for compensation because of uh, you dah rugi kan so macam mana how for you to seek justice if the contract itself is void because like we mentioned void contracts are not enforceable by law Voidable contracts, according to section 2, subsection 1, states that an agreement which is enforceable by law at the option of one of the parties. Meaning to say that in the event that there are circumstances that can make this contract void, but the other parties have right to say that oh okay i want to proceed with this, this contract and the other party can manage to do so all right this is a voidable contract which one is void contract which one is voidable contract okay first thing first coercion what is a coercion Coercion is a committing or threatening to commit any act forbidden by the penal code with the intention of causing any person to enter into agreement. Okay, penal code ni kanun keseksaan. Normally, we will use penal code if there is any criminal acts uh, being done. Okay, so maknanya coercion ni kerasan lah dalam bahasa Melayu. 
there are a few elements of coercion. So this is three elements. Very important. You got to remember this. Okay. Firstly, one party committing or threatening to commit. It can be you commit or you threatening to commit. And then secondly, criminal act or unlawful detention of someone's property. And then thirdly, with intention to force the other party to agree to enter into a contract. So all these elements uh, must exist in order for us to say that that act is is a coercion okay there is coercion happening so these three elements must be there okay this is some illustration of coercion at least you can get uh, the picture okay this is kind of coercion whether you work or you ugut someone menggunakan kekerasan the effect of coercion is voidable Remember, the effect is voidable. So you can refer to section 19, subsection 1, which states that when consent to an agreement is caused by coercion, the agreement is voidable. Bila mana you buat perjanjian tu, disebabkan you you diukut untuk uh, untuk berlakunya kekerasan kat atas diri you, so sebab you takut, then you setuju untuk masuk. Perjanjian tu contohnya. Uh, there, are, okay, there are two cases here. Kesarma, uh, sense of lechman, das against Maria Pachetia and also Chinambi developments in Umbrahat against Tai Kim Chu and four others. Uh, I take a case, Chinambi development. Okay, this case, what happened was uh, the respondent purchased houses to be constructed by Appellin. Okay, the respondents is this one. Tai Kim Chu and four others. Okay, this is the appellant. Each of the respondent had signed a contract to purchase a house at uh, twenty nine thousand five hundred dollars. However, the respondent were forced later to pay an additional four thousand under threat by the appellant to cancel the respondent's booking for their houses. Meaning to say, uh, they they already signed uh, an agreement to purchase uh, a house at uh, at a price of 29500 then they were threatened or forced to pay an additional 4000 or else uh, the booking for their houses will be cancelled so of course in the the court held that the payment was not voluntary they are forced to make the additional 4000 uh, dollar but had been made under threat thus there was a coercion in the agreement of paying the additional 4000 to the appellant now comes to the second elements that may affect uh, free consent which is under influence there are basically five like we mentioned before so now we are uh, we are covering the second one which is under influence before we get into it what is under influence any idea okay this happened when one of the parties to the contract enter into such such contract by the influence of other party who was able to influence him meaning there's two parties and then one of them will have um, a dominant power to influence this the other party to do a contract. Okay, contoh senang macam you abang and dia adik. So of course you are the dominant power untuk ajak adik you to buat something walaupun dia tak nak buat. So that is under influence. The definition under the Act uh, by virtue of section 16, subsection 1 give the elements of uh, undue influence. A contract is said to be induced by an undue influence where the relation subsisting between the parties are such that one of the parties is in a position to dominate the will of the other and uses that position to obtain an unfair advantage over the other. Okay, these are all the elements of undue influence. You got to remember each of them. Because 
um, all these elements must exist in order for us to state that that act is under influence. So firstly, the contract was unconscionable, which is uh, obviously unfair. And then second, the contract was between parties who have relation. Whatever relation is that, okay, it can be, it can be um, husband and wife, or brother and younger brother, or whatever it is lah. That that's one party is do dominant to the other, and then yeah, and then third one where one party is dominant over the or the other party, and fourth one the dominant party obtain an unfair advantage under the contract. Okay. Meanwhile, the fifth, where well, the other party was unfairly suffer or disadvantage under the contract. Unfairly suffer ni berlaku ketidakadilan lah. Okay. Unfair advantage, orang yang lagi berkuasa mengambil kesempatan di atas kontrak tersebut. While the other party, party yang lagi satu, mengalami kesengsaraan ataupun uh, disadvantage. White type of relation where one party is dominant, like I mentioned. Who is dominant? It happens when one party naturally rely on the other party for either advices or opinions or assistance or help. Okay, it can be physically or financially. Okay, for example, debtor and creditor. Debtor will be uh, relying to the creditor for money, for example and personal advisor or assistance okay you have an assistance and then of course uh, you will be following the assistance advice right presumptions of domination there are some situation where the law will presume there is domination between the parties due to certain kinds of relationship the situations are a Okay, we can look in section 16, subsection 2, subsection A. You can refer to your textbook. A person is deemed to be in a position to dominate the will of another where he holds a real or apparent authority over the other or where he stands in a fiduciary relation to the other. Okay, for example, this one state he hold a real or apparent authority. For example, father and son, husband and wife, elder brother and younger brother. This is the illustration. One party is dominant uh, against the other. Over the other one, sorry. Okay, section 16, subsection 2, subsection A, where he stands in a fiduciary relation to the other. Fiduciary relation is a relationship based on trust okay where there is trust it must be responsibility as well right so for example solicitor and client solicitor or lawyer okay sama lah solicitor ke lawyer ke it's the same thing okay with the clients ataupun uh, doctor or nurse with the patient okay or leader with his followers of course one party Will be relying relying to another party okay like passion of course passion will trust doctor to do certain uh, medical procedure on him because yeah he is a doctor as a patient you, you trust a doctor right so when when this exists uh, it means there is fiduciary relation between one another example is Dato Janginda Singh against Tara Rajaratnam Okay, in this case, what happened was that the respondent, this is the respondent, Tara Rajaratnam, uh, who was the owner of the land, claimed that she was induced by the fraud and undue influence of the appellant to transfer her land to the appellant. Maknanya, dia tak rela pun untuk tanah dia dijual, tapi dia telah, dia telah diyakinkan lah. Okay, by undue influence to transfer untuk memindah nama uh, tanah dia kepada appellant. Okay, in this case, the court held that the appellant and the respondent were in a solicitor client relationship. Datuk Jaginda is the lawyer and then Tara Jaginda is the client. 
the transaction was unconscionable and therefore the burden was on the appellant to report the presumption of undue influence. Tugas Datuk Jaginda Singh ni untuk um, untuk membuktikan bahawa tidak wujudnya presumption of undue influence, tak, ada, tak wujudnya undue influence tersebut. Since the appellant had not discharged the burden, the contract of transferring the respondent's land to the appellant was set aside. So dalam kes ni, Datuk Jaginda Singh tak berjaya. Tak berjaya untuk membuktikan tiadanya undue influence tu, maka uh, Taraj Ratnan dapatlah balik tanah tu. Okay, this is the fiduciary relationship. Okay, some illustration. C. Section 16, subsection 2, subsection B, where he makes a contract with a person whose mental capacity is affected by reason of age, illness, or mental or bodily distress. For example, contract with someone who is too old or too ill. Okay, di mana uh, mental capacity tu terjejas. Sometimes, disebabkan umur ataupun you demam kan. Kalau you demam panas, selama panas pun, you tak boleh berfikir dengan waras juga. So, it, this will affect uh, your mental capacity. Because of this, uh, you will have the natural reliance. You see here, between the nurse and also the passion. The effect of undue influence is voidable. Remember this. Don't confuse, okay? The effect is voidable, which is at option of one party, the contract can be terminated or can be continued. Section 20, okay, you can refer to section 20 when consent to an agreement is caused by undue influence, the agreement uh, is a uh, contract voidable, okay? Okay, we will continue on the fraud mistakes and also misrepresentation on part 2 you just remember that uh, free consent there must be free consent in order to make a valid contract and there are five elements that can affect the free consent we have learned coercion and undue influence okay three more left which is fraud misrepresentation and mistake okay we will continue in the second video Part 2. Thank you.